We're here at Northeastern University's Science and Engineering Center, where researchers in the psychology department are studying the effects of short bursts of exercise on kids' ability to learn and do math. And let me tell you, the results are big. Let's go meet the researchers. It's nice to see you. I'm Jim, nice to meet you. Yeah, you've got a lot of steps here. We do, it's one of the features of the building. Okay, I feel like I'm getting in shape here. Yeah, we're gonna need it. My, my name is uh, Chuck Hillman. I'm a professor of psychology and a professor of physical therapy, movement, and rehabilitation sciences. And I'm also the associate director for the Center of Cognitive and Brain Health at Northeastern University. Cognition is a, is a very broad term. Um, and it, it, it really encompasses anything from sensation to perception to uh, thinking. So the types of interventions that we're interested in uh, we believe have uh, some ability to, to influence the health of the brain and related cognitive processes. Uh, physical activity is really a big one for us. But right now we're looking at what are the effects of a single dose of exercise. If we give a child a 20 minute dose of walking at about 60-65% of their maximum capacity. Um, and, and there we're looking at what's the, what does a 20 minute dose of walking do uh, for temporary period of time, for transient period of time, uh, for brain function, cognition, and, and academic achievement. And so we, give, we have kids either walk or rest or perform other types of stress conditions uh, for 20 minute periods, and then we look at their, their immediate response for about an hour afterwards. And, and our, our prior data have shown that in that case, we actually see benefits to uh, aspects of brain function that underlie uh, attention um, and working memory. Uh, we see improvements in executive control, particularly for inhibition. So kids are better able to inhibit um, stimuli in the environment and focus their attention selectively to, to important aspects of the environment. And then we see improvements in both reading and mathematics in, in that hour period using standardized achievement tests. And then we know that the effect dissipates thereafter. I, I think what's important about our work is that we're, we're very public health focused. One of the things that, that I think we're, we're mindful of is what are the public health implications of our work? How, do, how can we use our work, our findings, in order to inform, say, schools or parents or, um, you know, or administrators? And our work is important because uh, we're able to take our basic findings uh, and our mechanistic research and then translate it to everyday problems and, uh, that occur. And so, for instance, our work with school children, I think, is important because the, uh, state senators have actually used our, our work and our findings in two different states to uh, create mandatory minimum number of physical education minutes. And so the hope here, and may, maybe it's a, a distant hope at this point, is that such policies will become federal uh, here in the United States at some point. I, I find it very interesting that we ask children to do things that we can't do ourselves, right? And so uh, in a traditional school setting, we have kids sit in a chair all day long at their desk and they're criticized for you know, chewing gum, for moving too much, for being fidgety. Um, and if you look at how we work as, you know, as a workforce, you know, we sit at our desk, we take breaks, we go get a cup of coffee, we go to the water cooler, we, you know, when we get tired, we, we check out CNN or, you know, or ESPN for a minute, and then we go back to our work. We take all these micro breaks throughout the day, but that's just not how we instruct kids. There aren't many groups that have married cognitive neuroscience and kinesiology. We're interested in how, how health uh, can really be benefited by uh, you know, some of these lifestyle factors. And I think that's just a very cool thing that we have control over uh, you know, our, our own health. You know, if, I, if I were to make recommendations for parents, you know, the most general of recommendations I could have would be that, that families, parents for their children and for themselves, just be building as much physical activity into your life as possible. Take the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator. You know, uh, park your car a little further away. When you, when you have the opportunity to, you know, have dinner and then go you know, on a nice day, go for a walk after dinner, do that. And, and as a parent, you should be uh, modeling good physical activity behaviors for your child because one of the most important factors for kids in developing their own physical activity behaviors are their parents and what their parents do. You know, I still have very fond memories of growing up on Mission Hill and watching my father, uh, you know, put on ankle weights and run up and down the hill, right? And, you know, 
I, I don't know where when I realized this in my life, but I, I would much rather run up and down stairs and do stadium runs than I would run on flat ground. And I'm sure that has something to do at some point in my life of watching my father, you know, run up and down Mission Hill. And so, you know, we, we tend to gravitate towards the things that our parents do for better or for worse. And so as a parent, my, probably the best advice I have is to be a good model for your kids to and demonstrate physical activity. So my name is Lauren Rain. I'm a postdoc here in the Department of Psychology at Northeastern University um, and I work in the Center for Cognitive and Brain Health in the Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Complex uh, here at, on campus. And so what I'm primarily focused on is childhood brain health and right now we're looking at the effects of an acute or a short bout of exercise um, and cognition and brain function after exercise. So basically Kids come into the lab and they walk on the treadmill for 20 minutes or they read for 20 minutes. And we measure their heart rate and how they're feeling kind of throughout that duration. And after they finish that intervention, we put them in an EEG cap, which measures the electrical activity of the brain. And once the cap is settled, we have them perform um, some computer tasks. And these computer tasks are designed to measure inhibition or a child's ability to ignore distraction and stay focused on, in this case, a centrally presented stimuli. Um, and once they're done with that, we have them perform an academic achievement test, which basically measures their abilities in reading and math, and then they're done for the day. So we think that exercise is important and good for brain function and academics for a variety of reasons. We know that in schools, academic achievement testing is important, and teachers and administrators are held to very high standards in terms of marks that they have to meet. Um, in terms of the research we do, we've shown that kids who are more physically active and more physically fit actually perform better on these standardized achievement tests. So although it's hard for teachers and administrators to want to make the time for it, I would strongly encourage them to include things such as recess and, and PE for kids. I'm lucky in that I love almost all parts of my job. Um, I like working with the kids. I like interacting with the parents. I like the feedback that they give. I like how honest and frank the kids are with me about what they're doing. Um, and I also like kind of mentoring and overseeing graduate students and kind of using what I've learned in the last 10 years to help them develop their own studies and their own ideas in terms of how and what type of research we can do in kids to you know, maybe optimize their brain function. Kids are still in a, in a developmental phase, so their whole lives can be shaped. We have the ability to, to potentially make a lifelong impact on kids' health. So if we can promote better physical activity behaviors in childhood, these are behaviors that they can carry with them for the next 80 years of their life. We have a long time to see the benefits of what we do um, when we work with kids. That's what I find particularly interesting about our research is that uh, we can change or modify kids' behaviors to be healthier uh, for the rest of their life. Well, it looks like one of the keys for doing well in grade school is for kids to get a lot of short bursts of physical activity throughout the day. It helps them focus better, helps them learn math better, and it makes the day more fun too. We'll see you next time.